How's it going everyone? Welcome back to another video. As you could probably tell from my intro, I have a pretty sweet stash of parts in here to my left. I'm not going to make you guess what car. It's going on the FC RX-7. So the FC kind of got neglected this summer just because we had a ton of projects uh, going on. But now the winter is basically here, even though I'm wearing short sleeves. Um, we are going to get started on a longer term project that will hopefully wrap up before spring. And that project is going to be turbocharging the FC. Now originally we are going to take the original 13B out of the FD and swap that over to the FC. But I figured I had all these NA 6 port to turbo parts laying around, so might as well give it a shot first. So a big piece of that puzzle is installing the standalone, and I do have a Haltech Elite as well as all the various wiring components, so we're going to try and install that. Um, we'll also have an AM wideband. I also have a ton of other smaller parts that I've had laying around for a while that I'll probably try installing uh, today as well. Um, but our main focus is to get the wideband installed and then also hopefully start on the patch harness and all that is is basically a harness that has uh, the OEM ECU plug on one side and the Haltech plug on the other. That way we could swap ECUs and pretty much not cut up the wiring or do anything nasty like that. We have a lot of items to get to, let's get started. So there's the stock O2 sensor that the previous owner kindly hacked the wires off of. So we're going to soak that in some PB blaster and then remove it and then we'll install our new wideband sensor. Alright, so the sensor's installed and here's the cable coming from it. We just need to run this through the firewall into the cabin. Alright, so before I continue to hook up the wideband inside the cabin, um, I'm going to do some stuff in the engine bay. First, I'm going to install a cooling panel, so it's going to cover this area, um, just help flow through the radiator. We're also going to prepare for our standalone by deleting the MAF. Um, so we'll just have to redo the intake slightly. Um, so let's do that real quick. Before I install the actual gauge, I'm going to replace this panel with a, a carbon fiber wrapped one. All right, before I put the panel back on, I'm also gonna install one of these insulators, uh, reduce the noise and heat that's coming from this area. Good morning everyone, it is the next day. We did run out of time last night, so uh, we're just gonna pick up where we left off. But first I'm just gonna give a quick overview of what we did last night. All right, so we installed a wideband O2 sensor and then snaked that through the firewall into the cabin. We also installed this cooling panel um, as well as deleted the intake side um, where the MAF was and all that since we won't be needing that any longer. In here, we installed this rubber insulator to keep out noise and heat from the transmission. We also installed this new pretty slick surround. We have our wideband sensor wire right here and then our switches. Probably going to redo that to clean it up a little bit. 
Um, now we just have to hook up our electrical connections to the gauge. All right, here's the harness you get for the electrical connections. This side is gonna connect to the gauge itself. And then we have red. This is the 12 volt, five amp fuse protected switched power source. Black is the ground for the gauge. And then you have these two wires right here, brown and white. These are the analog outputs. So you'll wanna connect this to your ECU. If your ECU doesn't support having a positive and a negative analog output differential, what you'll do is connect this as the input white, and then brown will be grounded um, wherever your signal ground should go or the ECU ground. Then we have blues, the serial output. We're not gonna use this. And then these are AEM net outputs, green and white. We are also not gonna use this. For my power, I already have this switch panel that I built a while back. I'll just add another fuse for the wideband. I'm still weighing on a DIN mountain panel for some gauges, but until then we are just gonna leave this here and make sure that this works. Now I obviously can't start the car because I delete the MAF and all that. What we can do is switch the ignition so that this gauge gets power and what it should read is at the very top of its range um, since the sensor is just in free air right now. All right, well, as you can see, this sensor is completely maxed out, which is what we expected. All right, well, we're not gonna have time today to finish the patch harness, but I can just talk through it real quick. Um, on this side, as you can see, this looks very familiar. This is the back side of a stock ECU. So this is gonna accept the ECU plugs on this side. And we're gonna pick and choose which inputs we'll need for the Haltech ECU by connecting a wire to the respective pin. And then having a wire come out, we'll crimp on these connectors and then push them into this Haltech connector. So we'll basically have a wire, the wires that we'll need from this side go into the Haltech plug, plug that into the ECU. It might be a little boring of a video, so I'm not sure if I should make it, but let me know if I should. Um, otherwise, I'll write something up on how I got everything working. All right, guys, well, that's gonna be a wrap for the FC today. I think we made some pretty good progress, but most importantly, we got started, and that's generally the hardest step for me. A lot of exciting things coming for the FC. I can't wait to get this thing up and running on the Haltech. Let me know what you guys think. Press that like button if you enjoyed. I'll catch you in the next one. Peace out.